I, again, I'm, I'm just curious. Again, I just want to reiterate, we don't have 15% of high school girls in America that are quote unquote non-binary because of intersex issues. We have 15% of high school girls saying they're non-binary because it's a social contagion that is infecting people that are perfectly normal and healthy with XX and XY perfectly functioning genitalia systems. That's the real issue. What's up YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today guys, we're back here with a new video today. What I'm checking out, Charlie Kick, Q&A, Transgenderism, um, California Campus. Without further ado guys, let's get right into today's video. This is gonna be really interesting. I'd love us to check it out together. Let's get right into it. Poof. Yeah, what's up, Charlie? Uh, I actually got three questions. First one is, um, can you say at least one positive thing about liberals? Liberals or leftists? That's the big difference. Uh, liberals. Uh, traditional liberals believe in free speech. They're just weak, and they allow the tyranny of leftists. I will say this. I, I wish the right fought as hard as the left does. I will say that. I will say that. I, I wish conservatives fought as hard as the Marxists do. I have respect for how hard they fight. Cool. Second thing is, uh, do you ever think it's possible to have uh, an independent, independent president ever? In it's a good question. Life? Probably not in, in the short term. Yeah, probably not anytime soon. We, okay. we live in a two-party state largely, but yeah. Cool. And then final question is, will you ever consider running president? <laughs> um, no, I, I'm having way too much fun doing this. and. Uh, no, and uh, there's far more qualified people than uh, a kid who didn't go to college and host three hours of radio. But um, I'm about to be 30, which uh, comes with its own fun challenges and stuff. But um, I hope we have a country by the time I'm 35, but I'm not running for anything. I'm here running Turning Point USA to save the country today. So, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Hi, uh, Charlie. <clears throat> uh, first of all, I want to commend you for coming su to such a left-wing campus, considering your views, so thank you for coming. But um, I was, uh, I heard you mention uh, safe injection sites and drug, it, drug it, um, overdose is such a big issue today. And um, there's this meta-analysis of 75 studies that shows that it uh, reduces overdoses, increases access to health services, um, and is not associated with um, increased crime or increased drug use. So what reasons do you have for being against it? Do you think that San Francisco is a clean city? Um, I, I, so they don't have queen injection sites, I don't think, but no, I guess not. I believe they do have injection sites. Oh, do they? Yeah. Hmm. So do you think San Francisco is a clean city? Um, no, I do not. Okay. So why do you think that is? Um, I'm, I'm not sure, I, I guess, uh, just a lot of crime and homelessness and whatnot. Sure. So we have 96,700 overdoses in America right now. Mm -hmm. Um, off the top of my head, 72% of opioid, like 72% of all deaths for young men are opioid related. Having quote unquote safe injection sites is nothing more than subsidizing an addiction to get somebody hmm. closer to the inevitable death. Hmm. Um, but um, in this uh, meta-analysis from Vancouver and right. Australia, so, it shows that it's lowers. I am positive that study says that. Post-COVID, I think any study from the major health industries that contradict what I am seeing is steaming hot garbage. Well, do and, you, but here, here's my evidence. If you walk the streets of San Francisco, you will see litter, you, littering of needles, feces. You will see homeless people that are completely addicted. And let me talk more morally here, okay? If you have somebody who is addicted, is it better to further their addiction or get them help so that they can break free of that addiction? That's a moral question, not a scientific one. Um, you could give people help while creating safer conditions for those who are still doing it and haven't gotten help yet. No, so that, that's tapering. That's a separate issue. That is not what safe injection sites are. Tapering is perfectly fine if so, because literally if they stop using a form of opioid, they could die. Safe injection sites is the continuation of the addiction subsidized by the taxpayer because we don't have the courage 
to say, you are suffering under a self-inflicted addiction. We're going to get you help, yeah. but you first must take responsibility for your own actions. The problem with the premise of safe injection sites is society itself is saying, you're really a victim, and we're going to give you the needles and give you the tools. And you could walk into San Francisco at any one of their health sites, and they will give you a kit, literally a kit of syringes and needles and literally an ability to put, put a rubber, a large rubber band, a tourniquet, thank you, around your arm to be able to find the veins that you can inject. Unsupervised, might I add you, unsupervised. That's not a matter of tapering or getting people off of it. A decent or a sane society would say, you know what? There's a lot of suffering here. Let's try to get you off of these things, not make it easier for you to continue to do drugs, which only mm. continues the cycle of despair and death. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Charlie. Earlier you were talking about uh, sex and gender. They're only being uh, sex, gender not existing. I was wondering, like, how you define male and female and, like, what uh, criteria you use to define them? Um, XX and XY chromosomes. Okay. That is simple terms. Uh, so, with, like, intersex people then who might uh, be born with, like, XX chromosomes, but they have... An exception to the rule, right? Yeah. yeah. So one, I, one, I just, one in every two, 25,000 cases, yeah. But that doesn't make the rule any less true. It's like saying if you see someone with an amputated leg, you say, oh, wow, that's not normal, but you still have something normal to compare that to. It doesn't make that the rule. Yeah, I guess. So my question is more like if somebody then does have, like, XX chromosomes, but they're born with, like, male anatomy, <laughs> Or, uh, yeah, male anatomy. So, so they're intersex. Yeah. So would that person be male to you or female? So if they're XX chromosomes with male anatomy? Yeah. I'm not even, how common is that? Uh, it depends on, like, the specific, uh, I think that one's Turner syndrome. So that can be, like, in 1 in 500 boys to, like, 1 in 2,500 boys. How do you think they should identify? Uh, I personally, in those cases, you know, like, you say that, uh, there's only sex, but uh, I personally think that those people should be able to identify how they want to identify because it's, you know, like, would you say that that's like an unclear circumstance or? Well, I think that their chromosomes are rather clear, right? Yeah. So and they then, have displaced genitalia. Yeah. Correct? Uh, well, I don't, dis okay. But, so you would want them then to present as female, even though well, they Well, it's not have... a matter of what I want them to present. It's what they are. Yeah, so they and, should... And wait, did you say one in 500 cases? Yeah. That's, that's insanely made up, i got to be honest. Like, that, you said 500,000 or 500? 500. No way. That's, no. yeah. Yeah. It's what? Yeah, so one in 3,000 is more accurate. Okay. All right, we can use one in 3,000, so... Oh, just yeah. a factor of six, but yeah. So then do you think that those people who are, you know, they have male anatomy, they should uh, wear dresses, present femininity? What, what is their hormonal makeup? I'm curious. Those people would have, like, male, like, testosterone. So They, 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 they would have more testosterone than estrogen. Yeah, in those cases. Yeah, I'd have to think about that, actually. Yeah, I'd, okay. have, to think, I'd have to think about that. So but then, but uh, the, the fringe case should not dictate the rule. Well, that, that's the yeah. point. But is I, that fringe cases in any scenario, whether it be rape, incest, and abortion, or intersex with trans issues, is not the heat or the heart of the debate at all. In fact, if I understand correctly, the study on intersex, again, it's, large, it's somewhat of a distraction of the few fringe cases that there can be, at the young age, like surgery that actually ends up helping based on the hormonal makeup. Is that not right? Uh, I mean, I think, like, it's better when they're adults to have uh, certain procedures like that done. I think it can lead to issues when it's done when they're, when they're younger, but I do think that there so are... Then, so, then if, so then if you think that... An, do you think anatomy has anything to do then with determining biological sex? In, like... When you say determining biological sex, do you mean, like, in how we define sex, or, like... I, again, I'm, I'm just curious. Again, I just want to reiterate, we don't have 15% of high school girls in America 
that are quote unquote non-binary because of intersex issues. We have 15% of high school girls saying they're non-binary because it's a social contagion that is infecting people that are perfectly normal and healthy with XX and XY perfectly functioning genitalia systems. That's the real issue. And so while I acknowledge this is incredibly murky and I need to think about it, this is a rare disease to muddy the issue up that biological reality needs to continue to exist regardless of somebody's own personal imagination. Hmm. Yeah, I think so, like from my understanding of sex, like, uh, like reproductive biologists don't necessarily use chromosomes. They use like what um, gametes you produce, like what sex cells, so like sperm or uh, ovae. But I don't know that let, let me try to find some common ground here, yeah. okay? So when the Biden government comes out and they say that men can take drugs to lactate and chest feed, do you think we've probably gone too far? Uh, is I haven't seen Biden say that. So That's okay. He didn't. His government did. But I'm just trying to find some common ground because, like, when the government says that it's – how about this? When the government calls women that are pregnant birthing people, do you think we're probably going too far? Uh, I think I'd, I'd, I mean, this is, I'd, I'd have to ask you like more questions about what you believe. Cause I don't know. It's, it's pretty simple and transparent. Yeah, I believe I, what I, people have believed for 5,000 years that there's man and woman and that you can't pretend to be something that you're not. I also believe what 99% of Americans believe. So it, it's really not that complex, but the fact you can't immediately answer gets right to the point of this, which is that we have this radical ideology that has infected every major part of American society. And I don't think we should be focusing on fringe issues or fringe cases when it's literally staring us in the face and it's a social contagion that is resulting in tens of thousands of people chopping off their genitalia mm. to create irreversible damage for the rest of their life. Thank you so much. Mm. Appreciate it. Okay, this was interesting to watch. Uh, and the first guy who asked um, Charlie if he's going to run for president, Charlie said, no, 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 it's turning to 30 already. And he has more responsibilities, a dropout. Um, he didn't go to college at all, not even a dropout. So it's understanding. He does, do, he said he had more fun doing what he's doing than being, thinking of being a president. I love that. Uh, I love the how clear his vision is about his life. So it's, it's just beautiful watching it. And I love how Charlie explained it, like, if this is someone who's suffering for opium in San Francisco right now, you start seeing drugs everywhere, um, needles everywhere. You know that people are really addicted to such. So you have to give them help, something that will make them turn better instead of you just neglecting them. So also for the lady who talked about the trans aspect, uh, I know some people uh, they were born with the X um, chromosome but they also have genitalians or female. So you such people who are born with excess chromosome and have genitalia of uh, female, you don't discriminate them. But at the same time, a lot of people who are in this trans family, they want to use that as an objective to say a man can feel like a woman and turn to a woman. So such people who are um, with such, they, they are... They call it their disorders. It's not like it's not something that is normal that happens to every single person. It's one in two thousand or one in twenty something thousands. So it's not like it's something that occur more often. It's rarely happen. So that's why they call it some. It's called disorder. I think something really ha went wrong while they were being forming. So you don't use that as a general bees of the narrative of this LGBTQ plus or transgenderism of this stuff. So that is the aspect we are all talking about. A lot of this trans family or LGBTQ plus A family, all of them, they are just using that as an objective to get to the mind of people and saying people are people were born like that. People do not observe it quick. So don't use that aspect of people who were born with excess chromosome whereas they have female genitalia as a way of objective so we have to stop that we have to totally stop that i love how charlie explained it properly nowadays they, they say women a woman who give birth are better mothers instead of a, a woman 
so it's it they are just kind of like reducing the word womanhood for me that that diminishing it so aside that this video wasn't amazing i love how charlie um explain to them give them more make them understand that's much better each of the questions from the one who talked about the politics to the one who talked about the drug to the one who talked about the transgenderism charlie explained really really well for them to fully understand what they're all talking about so some of them were kind of like confused they're trying to get it right especially the one the lady who was talking about the transgenderism she's trying to get more clarity and uh, charlie was able to like give them that clarity and understanding of what they what they are actually talking about so that was beautiful to watch and i enjoyed every moment of it this was amazing comment down below think about this video give us a thumbs up share this video to as many as you can subscribe to china i will see you guys in this video make sure you stay safe I, I just bought a bag like a old lady i'm back wood smoking i don't own papers pass that 808 that don't don't shake her or bitch you know i'm grinding like a pro skater baby mama bugging i'm so quick to hit ignore Buku,